Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And obviously by the picture on the screen, you can see we're talking Adonai Mitchell of the Texas Longhorns today. By the way, I'm sorry, by via UGA. And the reason I mention that because he started off as a Georgia Bulldog his first two years, actually won back-to-back -back national championships with the Georgia Bulldogs. And since we're mentioning Georgia Bulldogs, let's kind of talk about his snaps with Georgia his first two years. In 2021, he played 273 snaps with Georgia en route to that first national championship. In 2022, he actually played um, 141 snaps, you know, with the Georgia Bulldogs, winning that second back-to-back -back national championship. Transferred uh, after that year, and with Texas, played the most snaps last year, played um, 888 snaps, and actually made it back to the college football playoff again. And, um, you know, had a nice run leading Texas to um, the playoffs again. They beat Bama in the regular season, uh, ran into a buzzsaw versus Washington in the playoffs and lost to Washington. But he had a series versus Washington that made me stand up and take notice. Like, hey, this dude's a, a dog. Like He yelled to the sideline, hey, get me the bleepy to bleep ball. And he got the ball and, you know, scored a touchdown and, you know, made me take notice. But uh, let's take a look at his RAS score, then we'll get into some other stuff. And the RAS score is his relative uh, athletic score from the combine. And, from you know, with our prospects going forward with our, you know, draft stuff, we'll kind of throw everybody's RAS score up here that has one, and we'll go from there. So anything in the green is, is good. Yellow was, is average, and um, red is, is not good. So um, his speed, elite. You see that on the board is elite. 40-yard dash, 4.35. That's, that, that's nuts. Uh, height, he was 6'2", which, which is great. Vertical, 39, almost 40, 40 inches. Broad jump, 11'4", which is great also. Uh, hand size is 9. That, you know, hand size is really relative. It depends on how well you track the ball. But as far as the RAS, 0 to 10, 10 being the best, he has a 9.97. So a great RAS score. Now, RAS doesn't always mean you're going to be a great football player, but it's a, it's a huge indicator that you're a darn good athlete, a really darn good athlete. When your height, weight, I'm sorry, the height, weight, and athletic ability kind of go hand in hand, your RAS kind of match up to it. So we're going to kind of use RAS in our um, evaluation going forward since we've had the combine, and we can talk about the rest of these prospects and, and using it. Well, let's kind of talk about, his um his numbers for this year with Texas. Let me get into that. So this year he had 86 targets, 55 catches, 845 yards with 11 touchdowns. That's a catch percentage of 64%. But we what we all want to know when we talk about a lot of prospects is their contested catch percentage. His contested catch percentage it's 36.4 percent he had what pff calls contested catches 11 of them he only brought down four but that could be subjective it depends on some balls that you know if you wanted to go get them and he, he tried it's really subjective but we'll take a look at some of them when we get to the film his drop percentage 1.8 he only had one drop all year long that's a really good drop percentage 1.8 so he's a sure-handed guy so with that being said, I went and got his best film, and we're going to take a look at his best film on tape. I've looked at like five games of his. I really like what I see in Adnan Mitchell, but we're going to look at, take a look at his best game and talk about what we see, and I'm going to show you why I was impressed with Adnan Mitchell. Let's dive into the film. You're back with me on Sip to Tally Films. Let's get it. All right, now welcome back. We're going to take a look at Adnan Mitchell's game versus Kansas. I uh, had about 10 catches in this game, but this is his most complete game. We're going to see the total total package versus this. Now, I don't do a lot of player comps, but when you look at this, and if you haven't already noticed by watching probably highlights on YouTube and whatnot, or even watching games themselves with Texas, this cat looks like C.D. Lamb. 
And you know, I've had this this film clipped, but I want to see the combine to see how well he ran. And when I clipped these uh clips, I was like, man, this dude is a clone of CD Lamb, but I did not expect him to run as well as he did. He's a, he's a CD Lamb clone like through and through. But you're gonna see the whole package on display here. Is that right there? That's, that's a bad ball from, from Quinn Ewers. But just look at the catch radius. The ability to torque his body and just get this ball. See, that's a bad ball. That's behind him. But look at look at the body control, the, the ability to torque his core and go back and get that bad ball and help his quarterback out. And you need a guy that has the ability to do that. Not all, not all your passes are going to be perfect. This is a slant that's basically just bad. It's a bad ball. It's a bad ball from the quarterback. It's an RPO. It's kind of off a little bit. And it's off because you got this streaking linebacker right here that's um kind of getting in the picture. That linebacker right there is kind of getting in the picture. And it happens. And you got this guy in the quarterback's face. So, it, I mean, it happens. But you got a guy who helps the quarterback out at 6'2". And can go back and do that. You just have to have a guy that can help the QB out from time to time. And he does that right there. Now, everything's not going to be flashy. You just need a, you need a guy that can can be a possession guy time to time. Let's go to this next one. The new ones in the route. Just, I just love when guys can, can bob and weave in their routes and still stay on time. Just watch them go in and out, in and out, trying to set the DB up. Out, in, back out. And then just work back to the ball. Just, that's simple. That's simple. The DB don't know what's going on. When, when you got a guy that can do that and still stay on time, out, in, back out, got the DB turned around. So now it's to the point where it's almost like what Jerry Rice used to say. Make it look like a fade until it ain't. Ball's on time, great spacing. I mean, he's wide open. Like in the NFL, that's wide open. And like I said, I love guys that can just – add this nuance to their route without losing speed, without losing timing with the QB. And all it does is just fool the DB. It got the DB thinking all different kinds of things and he's not on his game. So he can't just sit on the route. Now you got him at the top. Got him in a little stack formation. And I, this right here, I think, I think this is one of the option routes. Now, for me, I, and the reason I got it where he's looking at the safety, I think if if that's if it was too high, or if this safety was, let me let's do this. If you had safety here and a safety here, I think he would split those guys and take it up the middle. But because it's a one high safety look, then he's just gonna work his way across. He's gonna cross the face of the safety. That's what I think you got. Because right now he's staring at that safety. And because it's a one high look, you're gonna get him working across the across the field and, and just working to grass. And the ability to, to read read defensive post post snap. That's what I think you got going right here. Just a small football player. You see how, how he slow plays it? And he's really just staring at the guy. He's just slow playing it, realizing, okay, it's one safety. Let me just break this off across the field. Quarterback hits him. Turns it up. Because you know in the NFL, you got to be able to read the defensive post-snap. Because when you play guys like Mike McDonald, like what you see pre-snap is not what you're going to get post-snap. And a lot of the defenders too, or uh, defensive coordinators, I mean. Whatever you see pre-snap is not what you're going to get post-snap. Now you got them ISOed up at the top. Now this is what I didn't like. You got little alligator arms. So not everything's perfect. And you got what you want, one on one. Got a little alligator on. Like it's just a little peak right here at number two. Just he just cut his eyes just a hot second at that dude right there, and then he stuck a little alligator arms out there. I need to see you at six two go get this ball, and then protect yourself while you're coming down. Go get it and just kind of fold your body up and protect yourself while you're coming down. If you're gonna be a big time receiver, you gotta be able to go get that. You got to go get that. Now, I think there's, there's some light at the end of this. 
It's a coachable moment. So he probably got coached up well after this happened. Because you'll see something later on in the game where he corrects this. Corrects this behavior. But alligator arms is you hear footsteps and think you, you hear stuff coming. It happens. It happens to the best of them. I love this. I love this. This break is so hard that you, it looks like a deep out. The DB even, look at the DB. Watch this DB right here. This, this cut is so hard, the DB starts to break out on it. All he does is just bring it right back to a curl. And now he's wide open. I, when I first watched it, I thought it was an out. Wide open. Look at the separation. Look at the separation between those two. Because of the route. The full package is on display in this game. Again, I told you he had 10 plus catches. And he tried to give you some yak. He's so controlled in his routes too. Like, he, like watching this game, I had no clue he could run a 4-3. Because he was so controlled in his routes. Like C.D. Lamb. Like this right here. This is why I told you a coachable moment. Like, he's just running so smooth. He ain't running full speed. Now he's going back across the middle. The last one he alligator armed it, he snatched this one out the air. But then he protected his body. He turned his back to both defenders, anticipating the hit, and didn't get hit. He anticipated the hit, turned his back to him, protected himself, didn't even get hit, which is crazy. Which probably would have happened the last time, too. He just got his body in a better position. Braced for it, didn't even get hit. Crazy. Let's go to the next one. Got two more. I'm going to show you. Got him at the bottom. And he's just so smooth with it, just like CD. Just like CD. Look at that. Look at that body control. Similar to the catch earlier. Look at the extension. Another bad ball. Look at the extension. Look at that torque. Everybody, every good quarterback needs a guy that can do that. And not everybody can do that. Not everybody can do that. Like the, the route, the route is all right. I mean, it's, it's an end cut it's versus zone. The route's all right. The start of this is is the that contortion right there. That's the start of this. Everybody can't do that. And you can see he's consistently doing it. He did it in the first play. That I showed you, did it in this play. Now, what I really like about him, and you saw it in the uh, Washington game in the red zone. The Washington game where he went up, called for the ball. You know, he told him, like, throw me the ball and went and got the, the touchdown. Work around the red zone. Again, he's 6'2", working in, knowing his way around the end zone. Told your ass way. Easy. If you can get in the end zone, you play for anybody. You play for anybody. And just knowing knowing they in zone, knowing, knowing the, the leverage, knowing how much room you got to work with. And they run their little smash concept. You got your, your your flat route down here, up underneath, which is right here. And so know you got the safety over top. You just got to beat them to the corner. That's it. And the ability to get, you know, in college, you only got to have one. But, hey, I'm a pro, I'm a pro receiver. So I'm going to get both down. So that's what you got. And so this is what I love about Mitchell. Like all this stuff I saw before I knew he could run a 4-3. Him running a 4-3 is an icing on the cake. So we already knew he could do jump balls. We already know he can run routes. We know he can contort, contort his body and, and go get the ball. So, I mean, it's the total package in my eyes. Total package in my eyes. Whoever gets this cat, I think is going to get a complete receiver. He's going to be one of them guys, man. One of them guys in the NFL that – Gonna have one of those long careers, barring injury. He's gonna be tough to handle on on all levels. He's gonna give DBs fits for a good ten years in the NFL. So this is Adonai Mitchell from Texas, man, and uh, his teammate <laughs> ended up being one of the fastest guys ever at the combine. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Xavier Worthy here soon. This is Coach Evans with Sip the Tele Films. I appreciate you for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And you know it's film season, and the film don't lie. So it's FTMF, and I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love. Thank <laughs> you.